who has the most power and future potential, the West or the East, NATO or the Shanghai Cooperation Organization? What is NATO and what is the Shanghai Organization and which one has more strong economic indicators? In this video, we will discuss and study exactly this. We will examine in a brief and easy manner what the organizations stand for, what are their similarities and differences, how do they measure in size, and at the end of this lecture, we'll examine their economic levels to see how may the future unfold. Hello friends and welcome to the Market Watcher, a place for gathering traditional financial and all other investment knowledge on a regular basis. Subscribe to the channel, like the video and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss out on any of our future content. Starting off with the more well-known organization NATO, NATO was started in 1949. It was after the aftermath of the World War II, when Europe was demolished, the continent's infrastructure was destroyed, 36.5 million Europeans died, of which 19 million were civilians. The goals of NATO had three purposes deterring Soviet expansionism, forbidding the revival of nationalist militarism in Europe through a strong North American presence on the continent, and encouraging European political integration. These main goals led to one of history's most prolonged free trade agreements between multiple countries. Today the European Union is just that, a place which offers free trade in between its member states. This free trade extends to almost absolutely all products and services one can imagine. The free trade and low tariffs and easier visa issuing also extends to North America, to countries like the United States and Canada. In general, when people say the Western powers or the West or Western economies, people include Western Europe, the US, Canada, and often they lump up in this group Australia and New Zealand. Although Australia and New Zealand are not official NATO members. These are the most developed regions in the world and they have the biggest economies. The West nowadays is synonymous with NATO. In 1949, there were 12 founding members of NATO. Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the United Kingdom and the United States of America with the main powers at that time being France, the UK and the United States. They were the biggest economic powers and also all three of them had nuclear powers. Later in its development and increasingly after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1989, NATO started to expand its members and nowadays the Union extends to 30 countries, which are all from Central and East Europe. Now let's discuss the Shanghai Cooperation Organization or SCO for short. The Shanghai Five Group was created on the 26th of April 1996 in Shanghai by the heads of the states of China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia and Tajikistan, in the words of the organization taken directly from their website, I read out the quotes stating the purposes, goals and ideas of the SCO. The main goals of the SEO are strengthening mutual confidence and good neighborhoodly relations among the member countries, promoting effective cooperation in politics, trade, 
and Economy, Science and Technology, Culture as well as Education, Energy, Transportation, Tourism, Environmental Protection and other fields, making joint efforts to maintain and ensure peace, security and stability in the region moving towards the establishment of a new democratic, just and rational political and economic internal order. So, the general idea is the same as NATO's idea to develop military, political and economic ties which protect these countries from other countries. SEO is a natural opponent of NATO. The SEO is for the East what NATO is for the West. Although, with the likes of China and Russia, now Iran, we are not that certain how just and democratic they wish their countries to be. But this is more of a political topic, not an economic and financial one, and our expertise is in these spheres of competence. As the great Warren Buffett said, one must not leave his circle of competence. In 1996, when the SEO started, it was called the S5, because there were only five members, Russia, China, Kazakhstan and the Kyrgyz Republic alongside Tajikistan. Then in 2001, Uzbekistan joined the organization. In 2005, it was the first time foreign guest countries were invited to join the yearly SCO summit, with then guests being India, Pakistan and Mongolia. Later on, in 2017, India and Pakistan were the next countries which joined the SCO, with most recently Iran joining in the middle of September of 2022. This was quite the turnaround as rumors have swirled for years that Moscow and Beijing were blocking the Iranian SEO application, in large part because they sought to protect themselves and the organization from tensions between Washington and Tehran. Prior to the 2015 nuclear deal, China justified denying Iran membership due to the latter's Iran status as a sanctioned country under the UN Security Council. But now, since the increased polarized world, which has led to major tensions between the West and the East, and with these tensions, China and Russia are more open than ever to strengthen their relationship with existing partners and develop new strong relationship with new ones. Iran can therefore demonstrate that it is not beholden to a deal with the United States and it can instead cooperate more intensely with China and Russia to build immunity against Western sanctions and pressures. Alongside full-fledged members, the SEO has a so-called dialogue partnership program, with which good relationships are started to be built and talks of a possible joining in the SEO had started. These countries include Turkey, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Azerbaijan, Nepal, Armenia and most recently Qatar, Egypt and Saudi Arabia have been invited and accepted as dialogue partners. Up until now we discussed the infrastructure of these organizations, their members and their similar goals and agendas, but they also have differences. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization does not have a NATO-style collective security arrangement and has remained largely passive in recent conflicts. When it comes to NATO, when one country is attacked, all other members have signed an agreement that they must take action to protect that friendly member state. This does not exist in the SEO. Another big issue regarding the SCO are the decades old and in some instances thousands of years old internal conflicts that are brewing in between the SEO member states 
and dialogue partners. For example, now we see escalations between Azerbaijan and Armenia, direct war-like escalations. We all know about the Shia and Sunni Muslim conflict between Iran and almost all other Arab nations, especially Saudi Arabia. China and India have had an intense, at some moments, border dispute. Pakistan and India are major rivals and have had multiple wars and war-like escalations. All of those internal disputes and conflicts make up of a much more individualistic approach to this organization compared to NATO. And as we know, the tighter and closer a group of individuals or countries are, the stronger they are. Now that we know the major differences between the two organizations, let's discuss their size and economic powers. The thing we are all waiting for. In order to gaze at the economic power of a country or a union, we must take a look at three statistics, the demographics, meaning the size of the population, the annual GDP, then comes the GDP per capita, this is where we divide the GDP number by the population of a country and then we take a look at the debt levels. Debt is a major enemy to long-term stability and economic strength. The less debt an organization or country has, the better. According to data from countryeconomy.com, NATO and all of its member states have a population of 948 million people. In comparison, the SEO has a population of 3.27 billion people. And this is without the dialogue partners, only the full-fledged members. In other words, more than 40% of the world's population. And only about 12% of the world's population lives in the boundaries of NATO. When it comes to GDP, NATO has an accumulative GDP of $44.7 trillion, while the GDP of the SEO is about $22.8 trillion, or nearly 50% lower. This gives us a GDP per capita of $6,972 for the SEO and a whopping $47,000 GDP per capita for NATO. This means that each person living in a NATO member state currently on average is close to seven times richer. Although it is important to understand that the economic growth in the SEO is much larger than the potential future economic growth of the NATO countries. This is very normal when we take into consideration that in the SEO in a lot of places still basic infrastructure needs to be built and still much more economic output could be exploited which in the West, all of that has been built or established already and the growth rate is much lower. This in investment mathematics is called the law of large numbers. The larger an investment gets, the larger an economy or company profits get, the harder it is to grow them further and the larger the number, the slower the percentage gain to the upside is. Let's now look at the debt levels and for that we will take a look at the debt to GDP ratio. Here we want this ratio to be below 60. The higher above 60, the more troublesome the economic future could potentially be. The current average level of NATO is sitting at the precise 110%. This is too high and just for context, there has not been any time in history in which a nation or a union reaching these levels has had good economic times and outcomes. Each time this leads to massive bubbles, suffering and hardships. As for the SEO, the average debt to GDP ratio is about 53%. This indicates a much lesser debt risk. 
Although, if a global debt spiral occurs starting even from the West, all global markets and debt carriers would suffer. But in general, the lower levels are a good thing. What this analysis tells us is that still the economic power is in the hands of NATO, but the demographics are heavily in the side of the SEO. The most important thing to watch out for are the internal conflicts within the SEO. These are the cracks which can stop their advancement or, if you wish, these are the feathers which can break the camel's back and stop it from its quest to reach global economic and political supremacy. In this polarizing world, it is important to know what are the new and emerging trends, so subscribe to our channel, leave a like and a comment about which topics you want us to cover next, and don't forget to follow us on our other social media channels. Thank you for watching until the end and I'll see you in the next video.